Builder, welcome to the Pre-Construction Podcast. Gareth, thank nice you, to man. Be Good, man. We have Ed Gonzalez and Caleb Taylor from Builder. Right, who's going to go first, man? Caleb, you're up. What is Builder? Yeah, Builder's an all-in-one uh, CRM and pre-construction platform, uh, basically combining business development, estimating, forecasting, marketing, operations, all in one platform uh, with the goal of helping general contractors make better business decisions and run a high-performing company. That's what we do. Brilliant. Elevator pitch. Incredible. Love <laughs> it. Right. We know that operations isn't important because it's basically, it's it's keeping it between the ditches. It's pre-constructions where it's at, and we're going to dive into that now throughout this podcast. Um, thanks for coming on. Um, I want to go back first. I always like asking this question. As an entrepreneur myself, I always want to try and figure out when was that time? When did the penny drop and go, you know what? Let's go and build something because it's a big risk. Um, yep. Ed, I know your, your background's pro core. I think you can probably answer this one. When was the when was the aha moment where you decided, you know what? I'm going to take a risk here. I'm going to risk more or less everything and build a product. Yeah, I mean, gosh, just thinking back uh, when I started Procore, pretty much early days Procore, uh, me and our third co-founder, Mike, were kind of on the team of, you know, 10 or so engineers at Procore. Um, and ultimately, as we all know now, Procore launched the uh, Procore Marketplace and their platform and all that. Um, and we kind of just figured now is a great time to start a company and kind of be one of the first guys to integrate with Procore, get on the Procore Marketplace and um, kind of see what what kind of impact we can have on our own um, on the construction industry. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. I mean, was... so, oh, sorry. I was just going to say Procore celebrated that, which I think is really cool yeah. and supported it well, which I don't think a lot of big companies do very well. And that was yeah. pretty cool to see. Yeah, but it's, 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 and it's really, it's satisfying for them as well, seeing innovation come within an in-house as well. Um, it's brilliant. And then w- w- what was the, you obviously had an idea of the product, why, why Builder? And I know you guys started out in a different journey to where you're at now. What was the thinking behind that? Yeah, yeah I mean, to be, okay. yeah, to be totally honest, like we didn't have an exact idea back then. You know, we kind of uh, just did what we do best even to this day and just talked with a ton of industry experts, gotten a bunch of trailers and, and we're figuring out what problems people were solving. And um, that ultimately just led us to some of our first products, which is um, our handover solution, right? So we were in trailers. Everybody had these insanely long uh, spreadsheets. Some were printing them out, just trying to figure out uh, what documents they need to collect for closeout. Um, and that's kind of what led us to our first handover solution. Brilliant. Love it. And then when when did the, the sense, who knocked the sense into you to realize that the handover at the end, it's a small piece. The real decisions are made within pre-construction. The real decisions are made at the start of a project. Those relationships, that collaboration, that's where the industry is going. Um, and I, I can I can openly admit it, Procore have got it wrong there as well. They're obviously delivery, but they're struggling on the pre-construction side. Um, obviously, the the Estacom, they've, they've, they've uh, acquired them. But again, mm. that good, good pre-construction solution I think it's still lacking in the industry. Um, so what 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 did you want to solve with Builder? Yeah, I mean, I'll jump in here. It was always, it's always based on feedback from customers, right? And so the closeout tool was really helpful for people at the end of a job. Um, but then we started having more and more people tell us that they were including Builder's closeout tool in their pitch when they were pursuing jobs and their proposals because it was a differentiator for them, which was interesting to us. And we started digging deeper into that. And then we had people telling us, man, we just finished a great job. We used your closeout tool on it. I want to make sure that this relationship with this client doesn't fall through the cracks. Do you guys have some kind of reminder system to reach back out to these guys in six months? We were like, well, that should be a CRM. Like that should be a customer relationship management tool. And as we dug deeper into that, we just realized our industry didn't have a lot of great options and certainly not options that were very user friendly. Yeah. And, and no, none that were construction uh, focused. Like they're exactly. all, we, we, we knew all the CRMs that are out there um, and they're all being built off Salesforce and, and different uh, yep. tools and platforms. But the real construction and what what is it with Builder that 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 really has hit the nail on the head? What what do you think Builder does that the likes of Sales 
forced products don't do? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a few different differentiators. The first and most basic thing is we said we wanted this to be the easiest CRM to use. We wanted this to be simple and we want to build it for um, the whole company that we're selling to. So again, we do unlimited seats, unlimited users. I think it's counter to our industry to like count the number of seats you have. Like everybody should be in here and we should really support collaboration. Um, but then all the different tools we have as far as construction specific forecasting, go, no go tools, um, the workforce management and scheduling piece. Those are not something you're going to find if it's not industry specific, you know, but every company we talk to is they're doing this just through different siloed spreadsheets and different siloed departments, you know? Yeah. I can imagine, I can imagine the amount of spreadsheets out there is, is ridiculous when you when it's like, think about CRM and we, we always talk about, I mean, the client relationship, how it's built up and how it's maintained. I mean, I'm a big believer in that, that it's built up and maintained within pre-construction. If pre-construction are able to cl collaborate, communicate, show visually how a project's doing, whether it be cost, scheduling, then that client is more, more than likely to come back on its next negotiated mm. or, or same at risk project. Yep, 100% agree. And I mean, construction, you're not selling widgets. All these other CRMs out there are built to support people that are selling widgets. You're building buildings and building long-term relationships, right? It's not about uh, the cheapest contractor anymore. It's it's about what do you offer that's different and how do you maintain long-term relationships? And that's kind of the idea we built the platform around, you know. Brilliant, brilliant. And talk to me now a little bit more about collaboration. We always... Uh... In the podcast, you'll have heard me talk about the three-legged stool. You've got the architect, the owner, and, and the GC. How do you how do you um give kind of data to your, your architects, to your owners, to show them certain amount of information? What way does that work? Yeah, I mean, when we talk about collaboration, uh, a lot of it is really starting with the GC, right? I mean, they're kind of the ones who are um, a lot of times maintaining that relationship directly with their clients, the owners, right? Um, and honestly, a lot of our GCs are now doing design build, right? So they're keeping a lot of the design in-house. Um, but really, that was kind of the first thing we tackled was making sure just from the general contractor perspective, they have all of their different departments uh, just all in one place. Because before that, it was, you know, you had leadership off talking to people, um, you had business development people with their own, their own spreadsheets, um, estimators off doing their own thing, just working for weeks, um, estimating a job and then giving it back to the business development person. Um, so that was really kind of the first place that we started, right? It was getting that entire um, set of people, all the different teams just in one system um, so that everybody is just always up to date with all of that information. Brilliant. I love it. Internal collaboration is a great place to start. Yeah. Um, but specifically, it's always nice. I think the one thing that pre-construction, and you may you may have got this through feedback, when I deal with candidates and clients in pre-construction, they feel alienated from everything else within the business. They feel when they give a project away to operations, they're not they're not in control every anymore. They 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 always blame uh, operations for messing up a nice twenty percent um, profit <laughs> margin uh, and business development the same. They hand off a new warm client to business development and never turns into fruition. So they can actually see what's coming down the line, the pipeline, essentially. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, that goes back to, again, the unlimited users. But like, let's say that I'm not the person running point on a specific job, but I care deeply about it. I've been involved and I want updates. You go into Builder and you subscribe to notifications on that job so you can watch the progress and you can be alerted when things change, stages, leave notes. Um, and I think it's, it's changed for a lot of our clients, just how they run their business. Right. And I think all, all the contractors we talk to value collaboration. They understand how important it is. That's why they have that Monday morning meeting every week. And they don't know how to go beyond that besides telling everybody to show up to this meeting with your spreadsheets and let's do a brain dump. And then they wait a week to do that again. Right. Um, and so this platform is just supporting that meeting and that collaboration so that you can tag people, assign tasks, get notifications, see where things are and and not just lose it when you pass it off to operations. Right. Yeah. And the kind of my favorite example from operations is just making sure that you have the right project team members to staff a job, right? Mm -hmm. uh, normally operations gets involved once a job is being awarded, right? But that's already too late, right? We want the operations people in there, making sure that you either have the right project teams for a job you're pursuing or 
figuring out that you need to hire while, while there's still time so they can get the right people in there. Then you win the job and then you already have the team ready. Brilliant. Yeah. And just on, on that one as well, Ed, uh, especially when project managers, superintendent, project engineers, they're finishing off a huge project, maybe last th three years, and they're going, oh, what's what's coming down the line? Am I going to have to relocate the man? Am I going to have to move company? And he can go quickly to type in the builder and go, oh, I see there's two massive projects in this area. Yep. I want to put my name to that. I would love to get involved with that. Yep, exactly. They can do it that way, right? You have a big project coming up who's rolling off of a job or you can do it the other way, right? That's another common use case as well as, all right, we have, you know, three project managers that are going to be kind of doing nothing in six months. We need to make sure that that's the time span where we're looking for a job um, right. so that we don't ha just have people sitting around not on a job. Brilliant. Love it. And then on the pre-construction and estimating side, we we always talk about the scheduling, the cost management throughout the, the life cycle. Um, what Talk me through the functionality of that and then again, using historical data within Builder. Yeah, I think that's the historical data is big, right? You need to have, so we have these four rules that we kind of teach to all of our clients. It's, the, it's like a, a method, if you will, and it's not a method we created, that's stupid. It's a method we discovered from talking to high-performing GCs, hundreds of them, right, um, all over the country. And one of the most important fundamental rules is that you need to record everything. And if you don't have a database that supports that and is a database that can be easily searched, then you're not setting yourself up to be able to make business decisions based on data. And a lot of the people we talk to are really good at what they do. They've been around for 30, 40, 50 years in the industry, right? But if you really drill down to it, they're making decisions based off their gut, which again, they have experience and they're good at what they do, but how can we scale this? How can we make this information more accessible and collaborative and to have a database where you can say, when was the last time we built a five-story office building that also had two-story garage? And was that actually as profitable as we thought it was? you need to have a database that easily supports that and answers that question. So you can then make business decisions based off of it, you know? Brilliant. I mean, it's a talk, it's, it's knowledge retention is huge. I mean, I talk about it a lot on LinkedIn, especially on the MEP side, but in general, so with a guy that's been, or a gal that's been 30, 35 years in the industry, making decisions on change order, that's all recorded in Builder. Is it on mobile? What, how easy is that done? Ed, you want to take it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's kind of the value of the CRM, right? All that stuff can just be recorded in the system, right? And it should be so that, you know, they can run a report and figure out kind of like Caleb saying, um, as an estimator, you know, what similar jobs have we estimated in the past? Did we win them? Did we actually run them? Like you're saying, what was the outcome of this? Did we end up having uh, a bunch of change orders that we uh, didn't account for? Um, so that's really, I mean, like Caleb saying, that's our kind of number one, number one rule is you got to record everything so you can do exactly what you're saying. You know, you've been doing this for 35 years. Um, how have the estimates been changing and, and where have we been right? Where have we been wrong? Um, that's kind of, you know, the core value of, of the CRM. Brilliant. And then talk to me now, guys, you're on about um, it, it being easily searched. Talk to me about artificial intelligence, chat GPT. What, what, what are you seeing? Are you, have you integrated into to Builder? What's, what's the plans for that sort of software? Yeah, we uh, definitely have stuff on our roadmap. I mean, we've kind of seen it over the past year and we've definitely seen customers using AI all over the place, right? So um, I think a lot of examples are with their proposals, right? They're running them through, you know, some uh, language models and, and just helping them with, with the copy. I think that's a really easy example. Um, I think for us coming down the line, a lot of really exciting ideas. I mean, uh, the system should be able to tell you, um, you should go after this job you have a high percentage chance of winning this job. It's probably going to have a high profit margin just based on all of your history. Um, just from our perspective, that's, that's where we think uh, the next step for us in terms of a practical use of, of AI is. Brilliant. And that's what we want. I mean, pre-construction, it's, and, and the using historical data, the, the, the traditional estimator that's sitting in the corner with the light off with, with his head down crunching numbers, <laughs> it's kind of disappear and it's the value engineer and it's the pre-construction, it's the communication side of it. Um, so obviously the CRM kind of leads them to that. Yeah, fully agree. And we just want to make sure that information is accessible and easy to make those decisions. Cool. Exactly what about right. what, what about subs? What what way are the subs able to use Builder or, or who who are your your kind of target clients? 
Yeah, we do have some subcontractors. I think the main focus right now or the ideal client is the general contractor. There's obviously a lot of similarities and we have plenty of subs that are interested and need something and want to switch from the siloed spreadsheet life. Um, but as far as like who we're actively um, trying to get introduced to and connect with, it, we're focused on general contractors. Brilliant. And what are you seeing out there? General contractors ways, you're obviously dealing with them day in, day out. Uh, what's the common mistakes that you're seeing when it comes to CRM? Is it leads dropping off? Is it not using historical data, messing up the estimate? What are you seeing? Ed, you want yeah, to I think, it? yeah, I, there's a bunch of things I could name. It's funny. I think maybe just because it's fresh, but uh, this term free construction comes to mind, right? So we see all these general contractors, especially this year, right? With interest rates going up, um, a lot of people are just kicking the tires and they're just doing all of this work for free. Um, mm -hmm. And really common not getting anything out of it not the a job either doesn't happen or it's not being awarded to them right and so um, one thing we're seeing change is general contractors are either charging you know for some of these pre-construction um, estimating some of this stuff or um, artists being way more selective doing it yeah absolutely I definitely think that uh, we're a bit off and paying a hundred percent for it, but you're right. Um, I'm seeing probably on average between thirty and and forty percent is a, 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 of pre-construction they're getting paid for. Um, yeah. but again, I think to your point at the beginning, Ed, the popularity of design build and design assist, I think that's changing everything. That's giving them more yeah. control and less risk. Definitely, definitely, and we're seeing more and more customers that we've had. Um, for you know, five years are getting into design build, and some of the, especially the newer uh, GCs that we're working with, starting out from day one, design build. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well, you're talking about pre-construction services. We had a couple of younger companies talking, maybe younger than ten years on, and they seem to be focusing on pre-construction and that value add at the beginning, whether it be video presentation, whether it be pre-construction services up front saying, okay, here, here's what we're going to give you if you don't think of it's a value, basically putting skin in the game and then getting paid for it on the other end. But again, it's kind of it's it's risky. But these these guys are are are, are so confident that pre-construction is where it's at and that it's the value add that they can afford to give that they're 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 hugely successful. Yeah. And that's where we just want, you know, for anybody listening, we just want to help people become more smart about when they do that, right? You can't do it for every single person that comes uh, calling you or, or knocking on your door, right? There's just not enough time. You're mm -hmm. just going to be doing uh, free construction for everybody. Um, but that's where there's always a time and place for uh, you see a long-term relationship potential. Then it makes sense to really invest in doing some of that pre-construction so that you win that first job and then get in the door and then turn it into a repeat customer, right? That's where basically all of our customers have at least half of their work comes from a repeat customer um, with some being 70, 80, 90%. And that's really, that that's where the money is, right? That, that's where you want to be. Yeah. That's a repeat customer building the same thing um, every, every, every year, every couple of years. Um, is there anything else that you're seeing that the, the general contractors, I know Caleb, you, you did a, a, a webinar on high performing. Is there anything else that you see is differentiating general contractors out there right now, apart from using builder? I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would sit here and just say like you're only a high performing company if you use Builder. We just tried to build a platform that supported a lot of these rules that people do operate off of. Um, I think one is general contractors that really encourage and and almost force their teams to record everything is valuable, right? That then leads to the top guys uh, facilitating collaboration where this information is accessible to everybody, then you have the ability to actually um, set clear goals and definitions of what the ideal job is for them, right? That's not an ambiguous um, idea. It's well understood and communicated to the whole team. This is our bread and butter. This is our sweet spot. And this is what we're going after. And then I think the fourth is really just the ability to analyze and adapt if you have a platform where everything's being recorded and everybody's got access to this information, now we know how much the industry is changing and the economy and all of it. You need to have the ability to analyze and adapt quickly. Um, and so I think those are the four main things that we're seeing these high performing contractors do regularly and do well. Brilliant. Yeah, I see it in my end as well. And you mentioned 
adapting um, i mean the adaptation of technology th there's definitely companies out there that are eating it up there they're yep. staying on top of technology they're getting the right technology in. and a big part of it is that is the right technology um a couple of complaints i've had is there's not enough free like youtube or webinars to show the product off mm -hmm. rather than having to go and book a demo and, and spend an hour and a half or an hour outside of there and, and, and we're all busy guys um so that that's good feedback as well what excites you most both of you what excites you most about the future especially on the tech side um is there something down the line whether it be for builder or the tech in general that you think will be a will be a game changer uh, yeah gosh as far as builder goes um honestly the last 10 years have just been great for construction tech i mean as far as let's start with the industry, right? Last 10 years have been great. Um, there's been so much innovation, um, a lot of new companies coming out. Um, 10 years ago, it would have been rare to see, you know, someone with the title chief innovation officer. So I think I'm extremely excited about where the industry is going, just totally embracing technology. Um, but I think the challenge, you know, kind of going forward is all these firms now have to pick the right technology, right? That's now, now there's choice, which is amazing. Um, but they have to really be selective about the technology that they choose. Um, so for Builder, I think uh, we're extremely excited to just keep expanding in the pre-construction space. Um, could list list off uh, any number of features we're excited about, you know, mobile app, um, go, no, go, all the stuff that we're, we've released in the past few months. Um, but for us, we're just extremely excited to keep expanding in, in pre-construction. Yeah, that go, no, go. That's a big thing. When it was in advancing pre-construction in Phoenix um, in May, there was a whole series on go, no, go. Um, mm -hmm. Again, kind of processes in place to make sure that the that, that projects aren't taken on that, that basically can't be delivered. Yeah, I mean, everybody that we're talking to has some kind of process for this, right? We understand that it's essential. And whether it's a PDF that needs to be filled out and then brought to that Monday morning meeting and we present the score and say it's 70% uh, or whatever, and then we make a collaborative decision on if we're actually going to pursue it or not. Um, people understand that we have to evaluate, but the value of being able to then compare that to historical database to show the reason we're willing to take a risk on this job is because the X factor and we can prove that when we did a job with this company three years ago, this was the profit margin at the end after all the change orders is really valuable to have, you know? And so that's why we wanted to create the a, an easy platform that allows you to have that go, no go tool combined with your historical data, you know? Brilliant. And then Caleb, does that then the same sort of go, no go, does that then turn into a presentation to the client? Like later on when you're saying, right, these are the mistakes we made in this previous project. This is how we're going to re rectify them. And this is how we're going to deliver your project quicker and a little bit cheaper. I think so. And it's mostly because of the information being more accessible, right? Um, it's like you have the ability to search that and see the history of this job. A lot of times companies that we're working with are using Procore Autodesk and they, they have a project management tool, right? So they have all their past jobs they've done. But what they don't have are maybe past jobs they've lost or didn't win, right? That's maybe that's not recorded in the database. And that's not the piece that's informing your decisions. And so our whole goal is just to make sure that information is accessible so you can make business decisions off of it. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the old the old saying is, I mean, you, you go through one project uh, in, in a year, maybe two years as a project manager, project engineer, but as a pre-construction manager, or an estimator, you might go through eight or nine projects in that same period. Yes. Yes. And our big thing is like, we want to help empower these contractors to do more with less people, right? If you can be more efficient, not have to throw bodies at the issue or hire. Um, I think that that's what we've seen, like even Mint Construction, one of our customers, um, they doubled their revenue in the last two years. And they like, attributed the fact that they can do more with less people because that information is so accessible and they can tag people and they're just much more effective. Brilliant. Love it. Talk to me now, finally, man, integrations, how easy is builder integrating? What way, what way do you work? Do you, do you integrate with all the, the big, the big uh, tech firms? Yeah, we have a couple of just out of the box integrations, right? You know, we've had pro core integrations from day one. You can find us on the marketplace. Um, email integrations with Microsoft, all that stuff. 
Um, but we've also released the, our fully open API, right? So um, it's just for our customers, but once you purchase Builder, you can um, integrate with the API and it basically is just access to all of your data, right? So you can just go in there, um, connect what you want to connect, um, shove anything in the CRM, pull things out, um, kind of kind of do whatever you want. Right, love it, lads. I'm gonna have a bit of crack now. When's Procore gonna buy you guys? <laughs> Gareth, you're not the first one to ask that. Yeah, we get uh, asked that pretty often. This has been this has been set up we... from the start. I love it. <laughs> it's I, been, no, uh... keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's um it's an amazing product. Um, and listen, anybody listening now who wants to ask you more questions, wants to kind of tap you up, um, maybe book a demo. Where's the best place to get in touch with you guys? Yeah, I mean, you can go to builder.com. It's B-U-I-L-D-R. Um, so drop the E, but we would love to show you. I feel like a lot of times it's hard to actually get somebody uh, in tech. These tech platforms won't actually show you the platform or give you a quote. We like to do that in the first 30 minutes so you can see it. With, I think that's one of my favorite things about this industry. It's everybody's just very authentic and real, and that's how we do it. We're like, hey, this is what we offer. This is how we're helping people now. Does this match up with what you're looking for or not? If not, no worries. I just want to make sure you know what we're doing. Cool. Yep. And if anybody anybody listening is going to Groundbreak, we'll be there. Uh, mm. Won't be hard to miss our booth. We have the the large fun booth that's probably making a lot of noise. So uh, <laughs> either look for us or listen for us, and and you'll find Builder. Love that's it, right. lads. I'll put uh, I'll put all that information down in the show notes as well, man. Um, listen, enjoy Groundbreak, and thank you very much as well coming on sharing your story. Yeah, thank you, Gareth. Yeah, thank you.